Hi, hello, howdy. Rocket here, and I am just chilling on my parents' farm, waiting for my mom to get home from work so we can get in the car and drive an hour and a half to Pittsburgh. Uh, this adventure to getting to the trail, to the CDT, is actually going to be like three days long, almost four days, well, yeah, four days long, from Wednesday to Saturday, if we can start on time. Um, there's a whole lot to it that I will talk about later. But anyway, just enjoying the last couple minutes with the beans and getting ready to leave. Please exit. This is the final stop for Concourse A. Okay, mom just dropped me off. And I have a little bit of time before my flight. Um, but saying goodbye to my mom was really, really tough because both of us have lost really beloved pets and um, we've just kind of been each other's companions. And so she got really teary eyed saying goodbye and it makes me feel really sad just leaving her, but knowing that, you know, this is what I really want to do with my life and my time and it's bittersweet. Okay, so I've made it to Chicago. I just am gonna be staying here tonight and looking for somewhere to set up my sleep system. So. All right, so it's five o'clock in the morning. I found a place to sleep um, right here. All right, and I'm right by baggage claim. Um, it was very loud all night. Lots of people coming and going, but I'm just thankful that I got a place to sleep for free. All right, after a two hour drive, two-hour flight, 14-hour layover, and a three-hour flight. I'm officially in Montana. I landed in Kalispell about 20 minutes ago. Um, tried to hail a taxi from the terminal, and he said to call some numbers. So that's a sign for me to give a hitch shot because I'm a girl and I'm a climbless. Um, first thing I did was probably buy overpriced bear spray, but it was at the airport, and I just spent $50 on it. I don't need it, but whatever it is, it is. Jump the gun on that one. And uh, I'm gonna walk out here and see if I can uh, convince someone to give me a ride to Whitefish, which is only a couple miles up the road. And from what I hear, most people are going from here to there. So shouldn't be too hard. Hope that I can get a nice easy hitch. I guess we'll see. Rocket is back. So the Amtrak station's closed. Um, I might find somewhere to stealth camp tonight. But I guess for now, I'm just gonna go find some shade and maybe something cool to drink. And yeah, <laughs> you just catch a train in the morning. Um, yeah, I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do. Didn't really think this part through, uh, but I got a really wonderful hitch from a man named T-Pop in Whitefish. He picked me up right outside the airport, gave me a ride to Whitefish, took me the back way, showed me all the sights. And not to mention, it's like the hottest day of the year here. So, love that. Okay, so upon asking a really nice couple um, if they knew where I could find fuel, they graciously drove me all around and helped me find the last can of fuel at the hardware store. Um, and they showed me some hotels that I might be able to book that might not be full. And they also showed me a super secret spot down by the river that I could camp at if I can't find any other accommodations. So I have some options. Um, it looks like everything's gonna be okay. Okay, upon further inquiry, there is only one hotel with availability and it is $345 a night. So, uh, I'ma be stealthing somewhere. All right, so all the hotels are booked that I called, but one of the owners of one of the motels offered me free camping out back. So I am beyond happy with that. So as much of a shit show as it has been, everything is coming together. So we're set up in our super secret location. I'm a super nice person. 
I'm very tired because I barely slept last night in Chicago. Um, so I'm gonna go to sleep and get up, catch the train to Glacier, and try to figure out our permits from there because it's gonna be just a big old mess. But it's part of the adventure. Good night. All right, good morning. So I am walking to the Amtrak station. It is 5 a.m., 5.30. Um, I got into town. Um, everyone here was so nice to me. I had multiple people offer me hitches, give me rides around to get things that I needed. Um, the bartender at Casey's Pub was delightful and very cute and also offered to let me sleep in their yard and shower. Um, because they got off work so late, I didn't take them up on that offer and ended up sleeping in a Good Samaritan um, behind some of their property. So um, I also had a couple buy my dinner because I looked really sweaty when I arrived to the restaurant. Um, nothing but kindness here. Everyone here knows what the CDT is. Um, I definitely would come back here to visit because it is very cute. Um, that being said, I got into my tent around 9.30 last night and fell asleep quickly, even though it was really hot, it started raining, so I was happy that it was cooling off. And at some point near midnight, I hear a blood curdling scream from a man. I just think, oh, you know, it's Thursday night. Maybe they're just drunk or whatever. And then I not only, not even 10 minutes later, I am awoken to the sound of some type of animal grunting outside of my tent. So I immediately think grizzly bear. I'm paralyzed by fear. And I lay there for like 20 minutes and I eventually get the balls to check and there's nothing out there. And I could have sworn it was the grunt of a deer or a bear, but of course I'm thinking grizzly bear, um, but it wasn't. And I think it was just a figment of my imagination and I don't think that sound even happened at all. But anyway, so I'm walking to the train station because I couldn't really sleep after that. And I gotta find somewhere to brush my teeth. We'll be off to Glacier to try to get a permit for Sunday. Okay, so I've just landed in East Glacier and I have absolutely no idea uh, where to go to get permits for backcountry camping. So walking up to the lodge to see if I can convince or find someone to give me a ride to Two Medicine, I believe. Um, there's a couple of places that I can go to get a permit. So that is the goal, to secure some permits for myself, Becca, Gail, and my buddy Winget, who's meeting us for the glacier section. And uh, then I just have a short little walk to the cottages. If I can figure that out. Oh, but look at this. Okay, so once you get off that Amtrak, you can just walk straight across to the East Glacier Village Lodge or East Glacier Lodge. Walk right up to the information. They will get you a shuttle there and back. So I'm going to the Two Medicine Ranger Station um, in order to hopefully get some dispersed walk-up camping permits. Fingers crossed because from what we've been seeing online, nothing has any availability for like the next four days. So I'm gonna just see if we can work our magic, if we can squeeze onto other people's permits, what we can do. Um, but I actually got this shuttle. I'm just waiting for the driver. His name is Tom. Today is his first day and I am his first shuttle. So it kind of feels special um, because he's lost and so am I. <laughs> I just left the backcountry permit office and the rangers and I, we weren't sure if we could make it work because everything is like booked and it's really weird distances, but we found a really, really wonderful route um, that has to a day off, some really short days, some really long days, but we're in Glacier, so just gotta wait for them to arrive and we can take off tomorrow. Yeah, I missed my shuttle, but I got us a backcountry permit. 
it's not the most favorable plan, but there was going to be no other way to do it. We found the only route with availability, and the rangers were amazing. So I just have to chill here for an hour or so until the shuttle comes back for me. Okay, so 72 hours later from my initial departure oh, from home, I am at the Jacobson cabins where Gail, Becca, and I were all supposed to be staying tonight, but they are on the train that will come in tomorrow and then we'll head off. Um, but yeah, so it's just gonna be me in the cabin. I might go find some food and maybe a beer and probably get some good sleep because since I left home, I really have been not sleeping very well. It's either in an airport or behind a motel or there was maybe a bear, rain, thunder. Anyway, I'm happy to be here. And I'm just okay, so I just confirmed our shuttle for tomorrow. Everyone's getting in in the morning. We'll be on our way to trail by lunchtime. I can finally take a breath because we didn't really plan too much, but until you get your permit, it's pretty much impossible. And you can only get a permit for the next day. So if I weren't able to get permits today, I would have to come back tomorrow to get permits for the next day, etc. cetera. Um, it's very confusing and honestly, it's a lot of work and um, never had this much trouble getting to trail before, um, but I assume this is probably the most difficult one. I'm just really glad that it's all squared away and um, <laughs> You know, the girls were supposed to be here today, but travel got all jacked up. Um, so it's been a little bit more stressful for me trying to take care of things that I don't, I didn't know needed to be taken care of. Um, that's my fault for not planning. And, um, but anyway, we're here, everything is good. And we take off tomorrow. All we have to do is take a two hour shuttle to the border of Canada. Hey everybody, good morning. Today is day one and look who showed up, wing it. You might know him from my Arizona trail videos, uh, but he has decided to come out and do Montana with me and maybe into Wyoming. Um, so he's gonna be the stick with all the berries. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm just excited that I'm not alone after four days, I finally have someone to talk to. The girls are here. Somewhere. You guys made it! Yay! Yay! <laughs> Isn't it cute? All right. Gail, we're doing a little um, shake down here. Um, we're sending home some goodies to my mom. It doesn't matter how many trails I hike, I have not got the capacity to pack properly. So thank you for these women. <laughs> I'm blaming my ADHD brain that can't not pick things up. <laughs> That's okay, right? We're one team here. Our ride is here. Yay! Okay, we're walking towards the border. Gang's all here. Okay, things are happening, my heart is racing. Um, but Rhonda and uh, Chief gave us some blessings and told us some wonderful stories on our drive. And oh, here comes the border patrol. Here comes the border patrol. Oh, they're coming for us. Uh -oh. Ready? 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 One, two, three. Ah, let's go! <laughs> There's Canada. And if you look, you can see the border skirting along the tree line. Okay. We are off. We have a few miles to go. Only 3,000. <laughs> Tilt that, tilt that sign pointing the arrow the way to go. Oh no shit. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Oh my Okay, we've been out here for, I don't know, a mile or so, and oh my God, look at this. Okay, so 
Sweaty Betty coming at you live from like mile four of the CDT and <laughs> this is seriously unreal. This is like the prettiest, the prettiest freaking place I have ever been in my entire life. Like what in the actual fuck? We just are stopping every five minutes because look at this. Oh my God. here okay made it to camp first day long day, day 6.1 miles we also took like an hour-long break at a water source so it's only like what five o'clock and we're getting to camp and we're gonna go hang our food because that is first and foremost to keep grizzles away and uh, yeah go from there so we're gonna find where the food hang is and go there immediately <clears throat> So we are here, and we immediately are going here to hang our food. All right, we're just hanging out at the food place because this is the restaurant where we hang our food. All right, so we just tried to hang four <laughs> six day worth of food food bags on one paracord. We, tried. we did. We did. <laughs> Success was had, um, but it took four of us plus a nice random dude at the campsite. <laughs> Clearly, didn't want to watch the struggle. How much do you think that weighed? A hundred pounds? Probably like seventy five pounds worth of food on on a hundred pound paracord. Um, we had to use like resources. <laughs> In the middle of the night, if we hear a, la a loud thud, we'll know that it's our food resting nicely on the ground. But for now, we're just waiting for the sun to go down so we can go to bed and successfully complete De Uno. What were you saying? <laughs> I was saying that I've forgotten how to be a hardcore through high hit, so I'm remembering again. But who dropped their shit in the river? <laughs> Me! And who saved it? You! <laughs> So I can be the savior of shit. <laughs> when I get Giardia in 11 days, we'll know where, where it's from day one. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I've now been shaken down and I'm remembering again how to walk. You did have a lot of shit. Yeah. You <laughs> have you, a lot of <laughs> Your food bag's 40 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't think I'm in a community of people who judge. Are we judging? Wait, I'm judging. <laughs> you openly judge. It doesn't make it any better. You're still judging. I know. Okay, so had dinner, talked for a long while at the campsite. Um, we didn't realize that it's quarter till 10 and it's still like daylight. So we all just settled into our little tents for the night. And uh, we're ready for it tomorrow. But look, it's still night outside. Isn't that crazy? Okay, good night.